consider things that roll, another interesting and enchanting detail arises. Here I have a disk of wood wherein we see the mass uniformly distributed. There is some everywhere with respect, say, to a central geometric axis. Here we have a hoop. The hoop has another property. All the mass of the hoop with respect to a central geometric axis is in the periphery, in the edge. So now, this brass hoop and this wooden disc have the same mass, but their distribution of mass is different. If then I put them at the top of the plane, since we see also they have the same diameter, the same radius, the same surface contact, which indeed doesn't matter a bit, we ask, how do they roll when I let them go? Do they roll together? That is, keeping neck and neck? Or does the disc win? Or does the hoop win? And I'm going to show you how this does indeed come out. Watch it. And so we see the disc winning. Now I'm going to roll another disc. Here is a disc, aluminum, much smaller than the hoop. And I'm going to roll these together. This is a disc and still the hoop. And the disc again Watch. wins. Did we not, I must go further, did we not see this disc beat this hoop? Did we not see this disc beat this hoop? Let me take another hoop. Here is a hoop. Well, it's a long one with a long axis, but it's a hoop. And here is a disc. Watch now. This disc is beating this hoop. This disc is beating this hoop. Here is another hoop and another disc. This disc is beating this hoop. Let me take another hoop and a disc. This disc is beating this hoop. And what am I getting at? I'm getting at a most astonishing discovery. First, <clears throat> if I rolled all the discs in the world, I would find that all discs roll alike. Alike. I would find that all hoops roll alike. Little hoops, big hoops, fat hoops, skinny hoops, they all roll alike. Big discs, skinny discs, here is a disc, here is a disc. Now, because it has a long axis, we call it a cylinder, but I'm going to show you that that disc behaves the same with this hoop as other discs did. Watch it. And so I'm going to tell you another secret. All discs roll alike, all hoops roll alike. Now, all discs, all discs beat all hoops. All discs. Now, I said that all discs roll alike and all hoops roll alike. The question now is, how about some spheres? Well, here is a big sphere. Here is a middle-sized sphere. And here is a baby sphere. And if the board met my requirements and I let them all go at the same time, they would keep equal separation and I would make a further announcement. The further announcement. All spheres roll alike. <clears throat> now, the hoops that I spoke of have to be very proper hoops with all the mass in the periphery. The disks must be very proper disks, all the mass uniformly distributed. And the spheres must be very proper spheres, uniform mass distribution. <clears throat> The only question that remains now is this. If a disc beats a hoop, and all discs beat all hoops, and all spheres roll alike, 
How do spheres and disks and hoops roll? Well, we know this beats this. And so the question is, where does this come in the game? Well, look here. <clears throat> if I roll the sphere, <clears throat> excuse me, if I roll the sphere with the hoop and something wins, watch it. I assure you that the sphere wins. You now know that spheres beat hoops. But what do spheres do with disks? Ho ho, a wonderful thing. A little difficult to show it, <coughs> the hazards of experiment. But I'm going to tell you, <coughs> all spheres beat all disks. If we let them go at the top of the track, the spheres always win, the disks come second, and the hoops last. Now I said that all disks roll alike. Here are two disks, and without revealing their nature, I'm going to roll them. Watch now. I'm going to roll them. Oh, one is winning, and yet they look like two uniform disks. No, they are not. So I have to reveal the secret. <clears throat> this disk, this one here, has some weights at the center. This one has the same weights on the edge. So you see, when the mass is farther from the geometric axis, the motion is slower. And I'm going to show you that. Here's the one with the weights lodged in the periphery, and here is the one with the weights lodged near the center. Watch now the motion. <clears throat> there it is. The only reason this body can roll, the only reason this body can roll is that there is friction between it and the inclined plane. Without friction, there can be no rolling. Consider the behavior of your automobile wheels on a very icy surface. They cannot roll. This model of a corkscrew solar system has been circulating through the alternative science community for some time. This model is not based on any proposals of Walter Russell. The failure of this model is that it assumes that the sun is moving, being led by its pole. Walter Russell's philosophy teaches that all planetary bodies rotate on the rims of their equators. This corkscrew model promotes the idea that the north-south direction is the direction of motion. However, Walter's, Walter teaches that the centrifugal motion implies that the actual direction of motion is east-west. Therefore, it resembles an, a, a disk that is gradually increasing its diameter. So it's expanding, it's expanding radially, like we see with every example of a spiral galaxy in the universe.